After 47 years at the helm and now 60 years with Syracuse basketball being a player in 1963, Jim Beheim has called it a career at Syracuse. He has officially retired. Adrian Autry, one of his assistants, will take over. And I am joined by Roosevelt Bowie, a man that was in the first recruiting class for Jim Beheim, a man that had a huge help in starting what Jim Beheim created at Syracuse basketball. His number is in the rafters that you see in his background. Rosie, thank you for joining us on a day that I think all of us Syracuse fans and Syracuse greats like yourself will remember. Absolutely. It's one of those days, but uh, you know what? It's anybody that's spent time around coach and seen and just watched what was developing. You know what? He didn't have anything to prove. We knew it was, uh, didn't know the exact date, but we felt that that uh, was near. Your initial reaction to Coach Beheim announcing his retirement after today's loss against Wake Forest? Um, well, actually, I was listening more to what he was saying after the last home game. Um, and that's when I, I started it, started, it made sense to me like he's just, oh, he's writing this out. And he, I, I thought that he had, pretty much done it then you know just by what how he was speaking and what he was uh just all the bases he's covered all the bases he spoke to everyone and uh that, that that sounded like the speech right there to me it's it's been 47 years now it's been a while this last decade or so has been coach bam after every last game of the season is this it is this it do you feel like he is at peace with his decision Ain't nobody's beating him over the head with a stick, making him do it. So I would have to say yes. You know, he, he, you know, he, uh, like I said, his, uh, his last press conference that I listened to closely, he pretty much covered everything and said everything that and addressed everything that he needed to address. You know, even down to the fact he said, that, you know, there's been, there's been criticism, but he says, hey, I've been here for 47 years. Coaches get criticized, but the thing that, that always amazed him, there were like 22 or 23,000 people at that last game where there was – and they, they, they retired the uniforms after the game was over, he said, and I can guarantee you the people that were complaining are not the people that are here sitting here in the stands. And he said, look at this. It's the most amazing place that, I, that I've known. So – and uh, I was like – I was listening to that, and I was like, hmm, okay. But uh, it was it was a, it was a, a, a very emotional uh, uh, game. They came out, they played the way that uh, he always would uh, amaze me at what he's able to get out of kids. Like he, he took, a t took a team that was terror. They, they, were, they played poorly and they came together and went to the Final Four. Every time I thought that I'd seen it all, he'd show me something different. So he shows me this team that gets beat by 17, gets beat by 20 points, brings them to uh, bring, bring them in front of a, a, a Syracuse crowd that loves them and they literally flip the switch and turn it to and he pulls out of them a whole, totally different animal. So he he always does something that amazes me, different than what I that I know that what I know about him. So, like I mentioned at the beginning, you're a man that has known him from the very start. You were in that first recruiting class, and you have followed ever since. You've got the background. You're wearing a Syracuse shirt. You have followed this program ever since. What can you say about the kind of coach that you knew? compared to the kind of coach that now he is at the end of his career? I met Coach Beheim when he was 30 years old. I came up to uh, Syracuse basketball camp uh, as a sophomore and a junior in uh, high school. So I was 16. He was 30, he was 30 years old. Um, and he's always shown me that he was knowledgeable. He's always shown me that he thought about the team first. He always said that, uh, you know, he's never been a big fan of the media. It's just a necessary. It's just a necessary evil. He said, "Why?" He said, "They want to. They want to know what's going on inside of this locker room. We already know what's going on inside of this locker room, and it's my job to protect who's in this locker room." And he's gone ahead and uh, done that. He has no problem stepping up and taking the blame when uh, something goes wrong. If he doesn't know how to do something, he'll say it. He'll work on it. He'll get better. I remember I was talking to. Uh, Charles Barkley, who said that it was in the Final Four, he had said that he didn't like uh, he didn't like to watch college ba college basketball because they'll get a they'll get a game plan, and then they'll start out and whether the game plan is working or not, they'll stick to it the whole game. He said, but not Coach Beheim. Coach Beheim, you'll see the game. You're going at halftime. 
he'll adjust. He'll come back out and he'll make it a game. He said, so it's, he said, it's kind of nice to watch a coach that will adjust at halftime in, in college and not go to one plan and stick it, stick it out to the end, win, lose, or draw. Rosie, I have a simple one for you. Sure. What does Jim Beheim mean to you? Well, you know, I, to, to me, he is, um, when I was looking for coaches, I had got down to the point where I knew I wanted to stay close to home after traveling to uh, Georgia Tech, to Duke, to Oklahoma State, to uh, Michigan State, and then out to Santa Clara. I just went all over the place. I said, you know what? I need, And the only thing I noticed I was doing was waiting to come back home. So I said, okay, I got to, in my in my youthful mind, I said, I've got to find a, a coach that has characteristics similar to my father. Because you know you're going to get in trouble and you're going to like, so he's going to have some reason to scold you. And I never want to have, if it, my, so my dad never, my dad would say, he was very precise. He'd say, he'd say what he wanted and never yelled. And uh, so that's what I became accustomed to. When I, so I came across somebody speaking to me and telling me what they liked or what they didn't like. And, and once I understood that, I could move forward easily. Well, I found that in Coach Beheim. So I said, I didn't have to worry about like a Bobby Knight type coach yelling and screaming all the time. I know I'm raised right, but at some point, if I stub my toe and come out of the locker room and I get yelled at, who knows if I'm not that guy you see on television choking, <laughs> choking the coach. So I said, let's take that risk out of the out of the, out of the picture by making him, uh, by by finding a coach with similar characteristics. So that's off the table. I would never do it to my father, so I would never do it to a coach who who uh, uh, addressed me and and coached me like in, in the same fashion. Um, I'm just very thankful that he took the time to. Uh, take the ride out to Kendall, New York, and sit up in our little tiny gym in the corner. Um, I was recruited by like 90 schools, and they were always so upset when he came in because Coach Beheim always sits in the closest seat by the door so he can make the quickest exit. And everybody that came to the school of all the coaches, uh, uh, they were always, when he came in, they were like, oh, man. <laughs> when, he, when he would come into our gym, and he'd just come up, climb up the bleachers and sit right up there in the corner and uh, – yeah, I'm just uh, really thankful that uh, that so it was down between uh, St. Bonaventure with Coach uh, Coach Sadlin, who's now the part of the voice of the Orange there, and um, but uh, Coach Brown wasn't the head coach, and I was like, man, that's so my decision. I was like, oh, it's going to be tough because St. Bonaventure is kind of small, kind of like Kendall, and I said that Syracuse is like a city, so. If I could go there, and they both had similar type of players. That in all, in both teams didn't have a center. So for me, I wanted to play as a center. So the best way to do that is go to a team that doesn't have a center. So um, I come to school one day. My coach is standing right there when I got off the bus, holding a newspaper. He said, uh, "Hey, your buddy just became head coach of Syracuse University." And we walked straight through the school to the coach's office. We called on the phone. I believe it was a Wednesday, and on Thursday, Coach came out. I signed my letter of intent. He's second all-time in wins. He's got one national championship, five Final Fours. But the public sees him, Rosie, as a guy, a sort of a curmudgeon, a sort of just not a happy person on the sideline. You as a player that played for him, how did he turn Syracuse basketball into the sixth winningest program in college basketball history? What was the kind of coach that Jim Beheim was that made him so successful? You know, very, very simple. Uh, like for us, uh, I remember I had, had a conversation with, um, I was at uh, Time Warner at the time. We used to do a show on, on Time Warner and uh, and Coach Beheim was uh, yelling at some one of the kids and uh, on the sidelines and everything. And, and, I, and I said, and we'd had a conversation earlier when I said I couldn't play for a coach that would yell and scream all the time. So they came back and they said, well, so basically you couldn't play for Coach Beheim now. I said, no, I didn't say that. And I said, well, what, what do you mean? I said, listen, let me explain. Let me break it down to you to the chromosomes. <laughs> we're, we're like in the 15th game of the year. This particular player that he's yelling at has been making the same mistake for 15 games. I said, it wouldn't happen to me because the first time he told me not to do it, I'd stop doing it. There's no need to yell. <laughs> it's very simple. And they're like, okay. Now, Syracuse has already named their successor. It's going to be a guy that was around the program for a while, played under Coach Beheim, has been an assistant coach since 2011. It's Adrian Autry. It's someone that you know, uh, Rosie. Can you tell the college basketball world and the Syracuse world as well what 
Adrian Autry will now bring to the Syracuse basketball program? Listen, it's uh, it's the, these guys have been following Coach Beheim, the, the coaching staff that's there. Everybody knows that Coach Beheim puts the final touches and the details on on game day, but the players, the assistant coaches, run practices. So it's not going to be anything new. It's just going to be now they got to bring another guy in to fill to fill a spot and to help uh, to help out where where they need to be helped out. Maybe it'll be a big guy. Maybe it'll be somebody that to to work with the the, the bigs. But uh, they've been doing this for a long time. Like you said, 2011. What the heck? He's it's. Yeah. I love the fact that we're like the only university in the in the country that has all Syracuse alumni in the coaching staff. That keeps everybody real. It makes it real close. We got a great group of guys. Rosie, thank you for coming on. I know it's been a uh, a busy day, I'm sure, for you. A day that Syracuse has been waiting to see when it'll happen for years now. And it, it happened today. It'll be a moment I'm sure that uh, you'll remember and we'll all remember for a while. So thank you for, for taking the time. My pleasure. Take care now.